Uh, hi, everyone. So, yeah, I'm going to be talking today about my PhD research into the organisation and control of tax abuse in professional football. Um, when I talk about tax abuse, what I am referring to are uh, behaviours uh, in which taxes are illicitly and deliberately withheld from the state. So that can be achieved by individual or corporate taxpayers. Uh, but those behaviours are not always criminal. So as you can see in this diagram at the bottom below, by tax abuse, I'm including evasion, avoidance and aggressive tax planning. Um, tax abuse has at least three similarities to transnational organised crime as defined by the Council of Europe. Because it restricts uh, government's ability to fund public services, it can be argued to place a burden on society. Um, financial flows and offending networks are often transnational, such as in using shell companies in low tax jurisdictions. Uh, and success of tax abuse often requires the support of otherwise legitimate professionals with specific skills and access. Within the context of UK football specifically, and specifically men's football in England, uh, the effects of tax abuse can be quite severe. Whilst the total costs and harms are not known, I did make, I, I have recently made a Freedom of Information Act request to HMRC's Football Compliance Project, which is a group set up specifically to tackle tax non-compliance in football. Uh, and their response indicated that over the last three years, they've recouped £150 million by tackling tax non-compliance, including tax abuse in professional football. And that's included opening 601 new cases against players, clubs and agents. Within football, there are specific opportunities for tax abuse, uh, such as in misusing image rights agreements. Uh, that, the, an example of a misuse of image rights agreements is when a footballer who has no commercially valuable image still is receiving a portion of their income as an image rights payments, which is taxed at a lower rate usually corporation tax rate, but possibly lower than that, which is obviously much lower than the income tax rate of a Premier League footballer, which would be, for the, for the most part, be 45%. Uh, so to undermine tax abuse in football, uh, I argue that I have to combine two approaches. The first is to understand how tax abuse is perpetrated, to understand its procedural organisation, such as who's involved, what steps need to be taken and what are the requirements to achieve each step. But I also think it's important to consider the broader structural drivers which might enable, incentivise or shape these abuses. And the reason that I think number two there is, is important is because tax evasion and other tax abuse has often been described as a squishy bull, meaning that if you close one loophole uh, then uh, and close off one avenue to tax evasion, it will just happen again in a different area. Uh, so I, I argue that if we're not really focusing on those root causes, the things that enable uh, tax evasion to happen, then if we just close off one situational aspect, we might end up getting the same thing happening, but in a different way somewhere else. Thank you.